Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Lockdown Garden. I uh, hope you're all well, hope you're all safe. Uh, we remain on lockdown and you know we're all dealing with that in our own way but if you're anything like me you're dealing with it by spending as much time as you can out in that space around the side of your house, around the back of your house doing some gardening. So today's episode we're going to look at planting alpine plants and succulents um, some tips and uh, a how-to guide of how to do that just give you a quick update on some of the stuff i've been doing uh, over the past two weeks um i've removed all the edging from the side of my lawn it was that kind of wooden um sort of short post edging which had kind of completely rotted through so uh, i ripped all that out and you know what actually i, I quite like the the look of just the grass going um directly into the bed so I might keep it like that for uh, for the foreseeable future and see if it grows on me um, I do need to do a, um, a little bit of uh, path extending I think around where you walk onto the grass because that's just completely worn away and there's no point in, in trying to do anything with that because it'll just wear away again um, speaking of the grass I've now managed to get some feed out and we've had about four days of rain so that's done the grass the world of good and even though it's just a little worn out grass path rather than a bowling green lawn I'm really happy with um, how that's starting to look now and um, all the raking and taking the thatch out that we did uh, probably a month ago now uh, is, is starting to pay dividends so that is great um, I've also tidied the pond area, uh, which needed quite a bit of work. Um, just a lot of sweeping and clearing. I've refreshed all of the pots, uh, including the aces. Um, so I've got some aces in a pot, one of which had died. So I've replaced that with one that was uh, in the flower bed behind the bench, um, which was just it was getting buried. You couldn't see it in amongst the hedging. So I've taken that out, I've put that into a pot, um, repotted some other things, top dressed everything, um, cut the ferns back. Uh, fed all of that and that area is looking really good now and um, my favorite place to sit it gets the sun in the morning go out there with a cup of coffee feed the fish uh, chill out relax it's great um yeah there's a big kira uh, kira japonica um this is a very tall plant with with yellow flowers in spring love normally looks amazing with the aces but this year nada um, completely dead and um, just just broken twigs so I've cleared all that out and there is a little bit of new growth in there so I'm going to see how that gets on uh, if not I am going to replace that when we come out of lockdown and I can get to a proper garden centre because uh, it, it honestly looks fantastic when the aces are just uh, are just coming out so yeah so that's that's the garden and uh, we've, had, we've had the pizza oven going um, for the first time this year uh, doing pizzas so I've, I've done other stuff on it but um, that was a great success and yeah just, just spending a lot of time the weather i mean it's just you know it really does lift your spirits um during these times um i think if the um if it had been raining this whole time it would be quite depressing um, but the fact that we've had so much sunshine makes it that bit more bearable especially as a gardener that being said probably all the gardeners celebrating uh, the week of rain that we've just had uh, and it's made everything made everything grow like mad so all the clematis that we cut back uh, is starting to, to really grow quite vigorously uh, everything else that we've cut back is growing um, you can see little buds now on, on some of the roses uh, our roses kind of go very early here I guess with us being on a sandy soil uh, and just little signs of life signs of things to come uh, it's really exciting Anyway, uh, enough about the garden update um, here's the guide on alpines uh, and succulents Enjoy. Okay, so first things first, got our old plants, as you can see, um, seen better days, so time to get rid of these, use the pot. Done. I've got some other pots here. They've completely disintegrated and so they're now going to get reused as the crocs for this. And the key thing here is drainage, 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 drainage. They don't need rich soil, they don't like sitting in water, they're used to mountainside conditions so you need to get your drainage spot on. So first things first, we get our croc over the... Uh, over the hole, that's a bit big that one. There's a couple of bits there. 
That's perfect. And then this alpine grit. If you haven't got any of this, don't plant alpines because they won't thank you for it. Just got normal multi-purpose compost here and I'm going to put a bit of this in. Really you want at least 50-50 in my opinion with more of the grit. Give that a good mix in. Now this is the fun part to using our plants. So this one here is Aeonium Hayworthy. So just again like any plant work out the height. It's going to be about there. Let's start off with the grit. Some more of the soil. Add a good mix in and then just create a little divot, pop that little fella in. In fact, let's go central. There we go. Okay, so this one's slightly different. It's a stone planter that I've had for quite a while. Uh, again, um, it's not actually that deep. It's it's quite big, but as you can see there, um, it's kind of fairly shallow. Um, so I don't need any crocs in this. Just a, a layer of grit, um, and then a gritty compost on the top, exactly like before. And then I'll probably put a couple of plants in this one. So. Drilled holes in the bottom of this already, by the way. That's um, Again, drainage, drainage, drainage. So I hope you found that guide useful. Uh, I hope it's given you some inspiration. Get out there in your garden. As I said, um, you can buy um, plants online at the moment and get them delivered. I, I've done it a few times. I will leave a link below on, on the YouTube channel as to the place where I got them uh, because it was a fantastic service. So why wouldn't I recommend them? Uh, I just wanted to finish by saying that uh, in the last few episodes we've been talking about cherry blossom and I made a bold claim that I think it's the best thing uh, in the garden across the whole year and now that the wisteria has come out and done its thing uh, I think it's given it a bit of a run for its money it looks absolutely spectacular probably the best that it's ever looked I bought it as a very small plant and um, they're famously um, 
plant of patience because they take a long time to flower. Mine took about, I think, seven, maybe even eight years, and it's worth the wait. Uh, now I've got the pruning regime, so you want to prune it in January, get out there, cut it back to about two buds uh, on all of the, the kind of vines, the tentacles. Uh, and then again in the summer, you just give it a bit of a tidy up and that really does help to uh, produce more flowers. So uh, I'll leave you with a few shots of that. Um, I'll see you next time. And until then, I'll see you in the garden. Thanks. <laughs>